I'm Andy Jenkinson, caravan industry expert. Welcome to my channel. What we're going to do today, we're going to have a quick look at the Unicorn Cadiz. The Cadiz has been around now for some years since basically Unicorn 1. So that's two twin single beds, front here which can make up into a double, and then in washroom. So in its new guys, what's it like? Well let's have a look around. Right, let's we'll start here at the front lounge area. Uh, as the same with all... Um, New unicorns, it's got the slope back seat in here which adds for a little bit of extra comfort. The bolster cushions here in the corner and also the handy little pouch there. Um, fly screens to the, uh, to the windows at the front and blinds. Obviously that big massive window as well. Uh, good lighting in this area. Uh, LEDs up there in the ceiling. Obviously lit round the side here, above the lockers, and also a spot lamp there. Now, what I did notice is that actually there's no spot lamp in this corner, which I think, on the value of this price, it should be in. Okay, that's that little bit of a gripe done. Central chest of drawers, uh, also uh, alternate, uh, occasional table in here as well handy slides out nice and smooth uh, as we've said before no under uh, seat access lockers again bit of a minus as far as I'm concerned again on the van of this price because it's just over £29,000 so I expect that sort of thing and that's where the radio goes of course now on some of the unicorns like some of the finish wasn't as good but this seems really really quite good in all fairness um, for your status TV area up there of course shelf there feels a little bit flimsy but maybe that's just me again I'll go on about those curtains I just think they look really really poor and I think if I'd have been Bailey I could have, have just done something a bit better than that but anyway that's the front lounge now obviously it's central kitchen and I do like the fact is that uh, there's a lot of work area here Plug sockets, your Aldi heating system, the control panel, and should you not think there's enough, there's extra there too. I think there's a, a, a real decent amount there personally. Great size sink. Again, I've said about the sink here, it's quite close to over here. Uh, if you're washing up, you could get splash over. Um, nice fancy splash back there. It doesn't light up, I don't think, quite as such. It just goes off that LED light up the top there. Um, obviously dual fuel hob, full oven, spark ignition, and of course, good storage too, he says when he can open them up. Actually, that doesn't want to open up. Oh, yeah, it does. Um, a little bit naff, uh, nice and forks thing there. Cutlery, he could do a bit better tray than that. 
and of course the wine bottle holders there and the Dometic microwave which is probably the best I've seen that Bailey do on the microwave actually it does fit in there and it does look really rather good and nice and flush um, couple of course open out lockers again that just feels a little bit flimsy but maybe that's just me and again what we've got to remember is that this is a really good practical kitchen and you've got a little bit of extra work surface over here should you need it but you're going to place your telly on it again I've said about this this sort of uh, suede effect here I'm, I'm not keen on that I think that looks a little bit of an afterthought now I don't have it bothered uh, control panel up there and for the solar panel and your lights as you come in again more storage here I mean roof locker storage is really really good and what I do like is that they've got a stable door so well done Bailey on that score for keeping the stable door and of course you've got the uh, Dometic slim fridge here when it opens it doesn't want to open no nope, we're not going to force it for some reason anyway we'll not mess about because this is only just coming this fan bit of storage up there too and again LED light there and again plenty of plenty of uh, area to walk into so people can be using the cooker oven and making a meal and yeah plenty of room to go up through obviously this will be used mainly as a two berth now when it comes to bedtime you've got the two fixed beds here and <laughs> they've always been high up in the Cadiz I don't know why but they've always been quite high up I mean those are pretty high those beds I mean you've got storage of course under here like you have at the front of course um, again we've got these uh, curtains which again as I said I'm not keen on uh, we've got this again here too again it looks a bit oh, it's coming away a bit there and the little shelf there I don't know it's just looks a little bit as though they've just remember thought, thought to put a shelf on uh, good size lockers got that GRP and we've got the uh, polystyrene fillets again at the top which I'm not over keen on but decent um, cut, um, mattress on there and you do get some cushions there and you do get a spotlight as well but great storage um, mini high key again I've said about this you don't get a um, omnivent roof vent in the kitchen area but on the whole people find this uh, if you're a couple will find this great and should you want to shut it off of course then you've got the concertina type um, partition now when it comes to the loo then it's it's never been over big on the Cadiz and you come in here and it is quite tight in all fairness um, you can you know decent enough shower in there again we've got the little mirrors and we've also got the roof in there which is great and also what is lacking of course is a washroom window which we decided to put a, a mirror there it's quite handy there's a little storage here and of course you've got your wardrobe here with your Aldi heating system there and you've also got this great little deep sink I do like that little deep sink that's good and you've got some storage in there and of course it's a Thetford electric uh, cassette electric flush and you've also got a little radiator there right so that is a Cadiz so quick sum up is this worth 29k you tell me well, I'm going to tell you well I think the Cadiz is quite a nice little tourer well it's not a little it's quite big it's quite big for two four people could really enjoy themselves this tourer uh, there's plenty of room um, it's, it's pretty well equipped 
great storage, good roof lockers, and I do like the design of the lockers. I think the interiors on the unicorns have, apart from like the curtains and things, I think like the style of the lockers and the finish are really pretty good. And I do like that. And I think overall, I mean, it does feel a very practical tour. The Cadiz has been very popular uh, in the unicorn range for years. And I'm sure it'll be just as popular now in this, this uh, regeneration. Anyway, I reckon it's pretty good. If you want a, a decent looking Tourer, you can't go too far on with the Cadiz. I'm at Campbell's Caravans, Preston, Lockstock Hall, who are Bailey dealers and Coachman dealers. And also, they've got a pretty good uh, selection of used Tourers out there. I had a quick look around before. And um, this van is currently available as you watch this video, uh, at their, their uh, sales ground. So, if you want the Cadiz, you can't find one anywhere, maybe you're going to be able to snap this one up, I don't know. So, anyway, I'll say goodbye, and I shall uh, say thank you again for everybody that keeps watching. Please keep giving your comments, and also um, look out for some more stuff coming through on the channel. And... Um, just to let you know, there's a. I've just been work, finishing off two more books, uh, which I think are both, one's definitely going to be out this year. That's Cameron in the, in the 70s, which is going to go out in December. And there's a visual history of the Cameron, which I still can't let you see the front cover yet, because it's still embargoed by the publisher. Um, but yeah, so lots of book work. And also, just one last thing the story of the touring caravan is now out, it's now available on Amazon or the History Press, and uh, in the Daily Mirror, we're having a nice little write-up about it, and, and caravanning in general, um, of looking back. So, um, as soon as I find that out or whatever, I'll try and do a quick vlog before that arrives on the scene, as it were. If not, then I'll just show you afterwards. And also, it's Practical Caravan's 55th anniversary this, this year, and it's my 30th anniversary in... Uh, publishing, basically as a freelance writer, I started in 1992 with a magazine called Caravan Live, progressed on to Practical Caravan, Scottish Caravan Magazine, Caravan Club, Caravan Camping Club, Park Home and Holiday Home, and I used to do one called Caravan and Motorhome Mart, which caravan, yeah, done quite a few actually, but anyway, uh, so we've got a big, a bit, bit of an anniversary for me, uh, just to show people really. I've been at this game a long time. I'm not a newbie that's just come on doing some vlogging and think I'm going to make big out of it. Uh, basically, you know, a lot of years of experience in this industry. Right, I shall go. Whew, it's warm in this van as well. I, th I don't know if they've got the heating on or generally water, but it seems really warm. We are in the showroom. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please keep liking. Please keep subscribing. Keep watching the channel and recommend it, please. Karen Industry Expert, Ali Jenkins. Mm -hmm.